This video will show you how to have absolute control over your sleep, more importantly, your REM sleep, and subsequent to that, your output and efficiency as an entrepreneur running a digital business. The two variables holding the majority of entrepreneurs back from scaling to multi six and seven figures are very simply output and efficiency, your ability to control, regulate, and optimize those two variables, okay? You guys have to realize as an individual running a digital business, your competition is not only as smart or smarter than you, the ones winning in your space, taking your clients, taking the majority of the market, and therefore winning financially speaking also, have fully optimized themselves to their full capacity. Therefore, they are no longer smart people like yourselves operating at just 60%. They are now smart people like yourselves operating at 100%. And therefore, in a battle head to head, they will win every single time. Okay, now in today's video, we'll be discussing REM sleep, what it is, why it's so important, and how we can increase that. Obviously, that's a, it's a very simple variable we focus on with the Peak Performance Program at my service. And obviously, our objective is very simple, to make entrepreneurs great again. So let's dive into today's video, obviously discuss REM sleep, what it is, why it's so important, how we can increase it. And on screen, I'll also show you some examples of metric data we collect with Aura Rings, obviously from our clients based around the world in the digital uh, business space. So individuals running digital marketing businesses, e-commerce businesses, SaaS and software businesses, real estate businesses, info product businesses. I'll show you many examples of their metrics we collect and how exactly we quantify that and then improve one particular variable, which is REM sleep, which helps massively when it comes to your ability to perform day in and day out with your work, obviously recall memories also, and actually perform as best as possible when it comes to your brain cognition. Let's dive straight into today's video. Why is REM sleep so important? Now on screen, you can see a night of sleep metrics collected by our client, Dimitri Ross, based in Australia. And we are talking about this bracket here, this column here, REM sleep. If you can see that on this graph, it is this little bracket of time here. So why is REM sleep so important? REM sleep is a time when new learnings from the day are committed to memory. REM sleep helps to form connections between recently learned information and our entire back catalogue of memories. So if you're thinking about pulling an all nighter to get more work done, or you're insistent on neglecting your sleep quality as an entrepreneur, stop that right away, do not do that. Relative to a person with a full night's sleep, the amygdala, the emotional part of the brain, is 60% more reactive under conditions of a lack of sleep. Essentially, on top of that, sleep deprivation shuts down the prefrontal cortex's communication with the amygdala, the prefrontal cortex acting as a brake on a gas pedal for your emotions. Essentially, your ability to learn and acquire new information actually apply that to your back catalogue in your brain, function optimally cognitively speaking and also function optimally emotionally speaking is totally compromised by having minimal REM sleep. As you can see in this example here, Din, uh, Dimitri's sleep metrics are very, very optimal at the moment. They're 93 in terms of readiness scores, sleep scores also 93, his REM sleep is two hours six, six in duration. So he's absolutely flying sky high at the moment when it comes to his sleep metrics. Now, as I move into the topic of sleep and learning, I'm going to highlight on screen Oriol Vingut's sleep metrics. He's one of our clients in the e-commerce world based in Spain. The reasons why I'm showcasing a few examples of metric data so you can see how these patterns trend across multiple examples. As you can see here with Oriol, his REM sleep on this given night is one hour 50, so it's pretty positive in the main. And again, the majority of his REM sleep is attained in the last 25% of his sleep duration, so primarily within the last two hours of his sleep. Okay, so sleep and learning. Sleep is important in three ways. You need sleep prior to learning to prep the brain for soaking up new information and laying down new memory traces. You need sleep after learning to take those new memories, particularly in the hippocampus region of the brain, and essentially hit the save button on them. This consolidates the memory and what you have learned in that given day. So what's actually happening here? It's almost like there's a file transfer going on. So memories are shifted from a short-term vulnerable storage reservoir of the brain, which is the hippocampus, like a USB stick as such, and move to the long-term storage site in the brain, okay? Okay, so to finalize my point on REM sleep, and again, with your aura metrics here, you'll be able to observe your REM sleep, which is this column. Uh, obviously, this is the database on a computer desktop, actually the database uh, in your phone looks slightly different. But anyway, this is REM sleep being highlighted in an illustrative manner in terms of graphs, okay? Just want to consolidate the point on REM sleep and learning. So during the day, our brain makes obvious connections, but during REM sleep, this is where we really make those bizarre connections and actually create them and fuse them together. So here's how Dr. Matthew Walker would explain it. So during the day, it's like a Google search is going right. You search something and you see what's on page one of the search results. But during REM sleep, it's like you search something and jump straight to page 20. Now we understand that it's REM sleep that helps us come up with the remarkable creative insights into previously impenetrable problems. Again, REM sleep is so incredibly significant for you as individuals running online businesses, in digital marketing space, e-commerce space, SaaS and software space, real estate, info product space, whatever it may be. It's incredibly important when it comes to consolidating memories and storing them in the back catalogue of your brain. To consolidate the point I'm trying to make on REM sleep and its significance when it comes to memory function, actually being able to acquire information and store that in the back catalogue of the brain, 
REM sleep is kind of like group therapy for memories. Essentially what's happening here is memories are being fused together and actually being stored in the back catalogue of the brain. It's extremely important you guys are optimising your ability to acquire REM sleep and obviously its significance when it comes to learning has already been highlighted by myself in today's video. I hope it makes sense already. So now that I've discussed the significance of REM sleep when it comes to emotional well-being, optimal cognitive function, and also how your body functions as well, let's dive into how much REM sleep you should be acquiring every night. Now, in the first 90 minutes of your sleep duration, you should be acquiring a period of REM sleep that lasts roughly 10 minutes or so. On average, and if your sleep is optimized, you'll be going through three to five REM cycles every night, with each REM cycle getting longer in duration. The last one possibly lasting even an hour longer duration. For healthy adults, both male and female, roughly 20 to 25% of your sleep should be REM sleep. So let's say, for example, you're sleeping between seven, eight and nine hours, roughly 90 minutes to two hours of your sleep should be REM sleep. Okay, so the individuals that I work with, we're looking to achieve at least 90 minutes all the way up to two and a half hours of REM sleep on a daily basis. So for those of you that are more visual out there like myself, I'm primarily a visual learner, I wanted to highlight um, REM sleep duration in terms of what we're aiming for on screen. So as I said, we're aiming for roughly 90 minutes to two hours. As you can see for Dylan in this example, he attained two hours and seven minutes of REM sleep on this given night. Now you guys have noticed that roughly 75% of your REM sleep is obtained in the last two hours of your sleep or last 25% of your sleep. So let's say for example, you're sleeping eight hours per night. The last two hours should be primarily REM sleep. And as you can see here, this chunk of REM is roughly lasting for about an hour, as I already highlighted in the earlier earlier on in the video. Okay, so again, I said your sleep cycles in REM will then extend in duration throughout the night, so they get bigger and bigger, progressively speaking, obviously unless awake time interferes, as you can see here, and therefore the last REM cycle can last roughly an hour or so in duration. Okay, now if for example you're minimizing your sleep duration from eight hours to six hours, that'll mean that your REM sleep is going to be compromised fairly significantly because as I said, you obtain 75% of your REM sleep in the last 25% of your sleep duration. So again, for those of you that are not optimizing your sleep quality and obviously the duration and length of your sleep, you're going to be massively compromising yourself when it comes to your ability to obtain REM sleep because the difference between sleeping six hours per night and eight hours a night can be literally an hour and a half of REM sleep, okay? You guys are massively shooting yourselves in the foot. As you can see, let's say for example, Dylan chose to wake, wake up two hours earlier. As you can see, he woke up at 8.30 now on this given night. If he woke up at 6.30, he'd have missed roughly an hour and a half of REM sleep, okay? Therefore, his REM sleep would have only been around an hour. That is poor, okay? You guys must be optimizing this variable and looking to extend your sleep duration on a daily basis. Okay, so now that we've explored what REM sleep is, why it's so important, how much you need and how you can increase it, I'm now going to highlight some action items you guys can incorporate to further improve your REM sleep and actually just overall your quality of sleep. So let's dive into my reading from my notebook here. We'll take this all in one take. Just a few action items you guys can prioritize to maximize your REM sleep and your ability to actually uh, accumulate REM sleep. So first and foremost, duration. In order to acquire as much REM sleep as possible, you're looking to extend your sleep duration. So majority of individuals, when they first come to me, and obviously I assess the aura metrics with the entrepreneurs that we work with anyway, uh, their duration of sleep is roughly seven, six hours in duration. Their time in bed may be about eight hours, but their duration of sleep is actually six hours. Again, uh, I track all my metric data with an aura ring and also all of my clients do. So if you guys have not picked up an aura ring yet, please make sure you do so. I'm not affiliated with the company, just make sure you pick up an aura ring to quantify your metric data, especially your sleep quality. Okay, so again, maximize your sleep duration. So I plan for at least nine hours in bed when it comes to my sleep. Therefore, I'm retaining at least eight hours of sleep, actual total sleep. Therefore, my ability to acquire REM sleep is gonna be greatly increased. Okay, so I'm roughly attaining about two hours of REM sleep on a, on a daily basis. If, for example, I were to limit myself to five hours of sleep duration every night, my REM sleep may be between half an hour to an hour, hour and a half, absolute max, okay? It's that significant. So duration is a massive point to prioritize. Continuity, and what I mean by continuity is simply a case of making sure that you're minimizing your awake time as much as possible. So let's say, for example, you are wearing your aura ring and it tells you that you've been in bed for about eight and a half hours, you've actually only attained six and a half hours of sleep. That's because your wake time is uh, largely responsible for two hours of that period. In case you've been in bed for eight, eight and a half hours, you've actually only been asleep for six and a half hours because your wake time is two hours in duration. That is pretty poor. Again, you want to assess the following variables which contribute to heightened awake time. You want to assess body temperature. So in your room, if you're based in America, you want to set your room to roughly 63 to 66 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're based in the UK, that's between 18 degrees Celsius to 21 degrees Celsius. I'm fortunate enough to have aircon here, but I also ventilate my room throughout the day to make sure that I'm getting in enough fresh air. And also my room temperature is reduced to the best quality possible. Uh, temperatures can be a massive variable when it comes to making sure that you are minimizing your awake time. Because obviously if you get too hot, you're going to roll out of bed, take the cover off, or you're just going to be awake all night. Okay, that's the last thing you want to be dealing with. 
okay? Um, also, another variable of that would actually be sleep in terms of assessing your environment. And that's something which most individuals do not think of. So if you're based in an urban environment like I am here in London, I actually live right opposite the US Embassy in London, um, then there may be some noise pollution, there may be some traffic driving by, there may be people living in the apartments above, which are fairly noisy. If those are variables you're dealing with, you have to be dealing with those variables appropriately. So you could be dealing, you, you could be utilizing a white noise filter, you could be wearing earplugs. Just make sure that your, your noise pollution or the environment that you're, you're surrounding yourself in is as quiet as possible. Otherwise, again, your awake time can be heightened. And you guys will experience that before when you've been living at home. You've had parents moving around at night, late at night, you've had siblings moving around late at night. They create they, a large bang as a, a sudden smash of something. You're going to wake up. Okay, as, the, as human beings, we're designed to survive. If there's any noise like that, we are going to wake up. So again, assess the noise in your environment and try and minimize that as much as possible. Uh, make sure in terms of regularity, you are as consistent as possible with your sleep start and end times. I actually have my whiteboard over here. You guys can't see it, but my very clearly set sleep start and end times, which are 10 and 7. So I currently go to bed at 10 at night and wake up at 7 in the morning, which enables for roughly nine hours in bed. Therefore, my sleep duration should be between eight and eight and a half hours per night. Okay, so I'm maintaining two hours of RAM sleep pretty easily, provided I stick to those variables. Again, when it comes to regulating your circadian rhythm, that's a massive, massively, massive, massively important component of sleep quality and making sure you're as efficient as possible from a hormonal perspective. So if, for example, I'm going to bed at seven o'clock in the, in the evening one night, and then going to bed at three o'clock in the morning the other night, my ability to acquire REM sleep is going to be compromised pretty drastically because my circadian rhythm is so thrown off I'm pretty much putting myself through jet lag on a daily basis. So again, make sure you are as consistent as you can with your sleep start and end times. Uh, make sure you adhere to your sleep chronotype as well. So assess, uh, you can carry out Michael Bruce's sleep chronotype test online, the power of when quiz, which will inform you of which sleep chronotype you are and what you should be adhering to when it comes to sleep start and end times or what they suggest you should be adhering to anyway. Stay away from, from alcohol. Um, guys, alcohol is gonna be really poor for you when it comes to attaining REM sleep. Stay away from it at all costs. I also recommend eating four to five hours out from your sleep start time. Now, if you guys are practicing intermittent fasting, that can be a little bit difficult or it can be something which you guys will let slip. Um, so personally speaking, my sleep start time again, as I said, is 10 o'clock. So I eat as close as I can to 5 p.m. at night. That is my last meal. I do not consume any calories past that point. The reason being as to why is because by consuming food, my body's digesting that food source. My heart rate is going to accelerate. My body, my body temperature can also accelerate. And that means that my quality of sleep can be compromised to a degree. So make sure you're eating four to five hours out from your sleep start time. Having said that, you guys can test. So some individuals may respond better by eating three hours uh, to their sleep start time. Personally speaking, my sleep is about five hours and I also make sure that my last meal is not too calorically dense. Um, hence why currently speaking, I am not fasting. I'm consuming roughly three to four meals per day, roughly making up three and a half thousand calories per day based on my energy expenditure also. So something I can dive into in another video. Uh, make sure you guys are surrounding yourself in a dark environment, okay? So make sure that your room is uh, has blackout blinds in it, make sure there's no light sources like LED light source like your alarm clock, your phone, your iPad, disturbing you at night. And also make sure you're not exposing yourself to blue lights late at night. Give me two seconds here. I'll grab a variation of my blue light blocking glasses. Um, these are also a massively important variable to be wearing when, when you are going to bed and obviously making sure you're optimizing your sleep quality. As you can see, I'm wearing my clear lenses right now. These are more appropriate for whilst I'm working on the computer, but at roughly eight o'clock at night and when the sun's setting here in the UK as we approach the end of the summer, I wear my orange lens, orange lens glasses, tongue twister. I'll show you in a second here. Now, these are from a company called True Dark. Okay, and these are orange lens glasses. My girlfriend hates them, but <laughs> they are awesome uh, when it comes to maximizing sleep quality. Um, you do look like you're something like you're wearing something from Star Trek, from the set of Star Trek. But again, these are really, really good quality products to be wearing. Uh, make sure you guys are not exposing yourself to blue light late at night. And obviously that goes for your surroundings as well. So make sure you're utilizing red light tools as best as possible when it comes to your sleep start times, obviously around the period of that. So make sure you're not utilizing tech in the last hour prior to bed also. Okay, really, really important action item. Uh, make sure you're avoiding caffeine after midday. Very, very basic one, but make sure you guys are not consuming any caffeine sources late at night. Avoiding tech at night, obviously said that already. Um, if you guys are dealing with ruminating thoughts or dealing with business thoughts or things which are stresses in life, it could be socially speaking, it could be business related, it could be in terms of your personal finances, whatever it may be. Make sure you are completing a brain dump in at least the two hours prior to bed, or it could be the hour prior to bed, like I personally do. So I personally plan my day, prepare tomorrow today. So I plan my day in advance with my notebook. Um, I believe this is the right notebook, yes it is. Um, so I actually highlight everything which I'm gonna be competing in the following day in advance at night. But I also complete a brain dump, which I'm simply putting down all the thoughts, all my ruminating thoughts into a pad of, a pad of paper, 
closing that up and therefore I'm not dealing with that for the rest of the night, okay? Make sure you're exercising consistently and that is a priority. So that's gonna yield, uh, yield sorry, long-term improvements when it comes to REM sleep, not necessarily short-term improvements, but long-term improvements. Um, reserve your bedroom for rest and romance only. Make sure you're not working in the in the bedroom. Make sure you're simply reserving that for rest and romance, as I said. And also, one variable most individuals do not consider again is timing your naps. If you are having a nap in the afternoon, make sure it's roughly seven hours prior to your sleep start time. So personally, if I have a nap, if it's needed, it'll be 20 minutes longer duration and will only last, uh, sorry, and will be around 3 p.m. As I said, my sleep start time is 10 o'clock. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video on REM sleep, why it's so important, how we can improve it, and obviously the variables in which uh, are really important when it comes to assessing and how we can actually improve REM sleep. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Leave me any questions you have in the comments below. Obviously, subscribe to the channel, and obviously, I will be posting more content in the coming weeks moving forward.